Welcome to our demonstration of the Integration Hub Jira Spoke. First, we need to install the spoke. So on the left-hand navigation, search for Applications. Under All Applications, we want to click on All. And then once that loads, let's go ahead and search for the Jira Spoke. And there it is. Click Install. There are the dependencies that are already installed. Now, this process, I've sped up quite a bit for this recording. Normally, it will take you a little while. And even though it looks like it is finished, you need to wait for the close button. And there's the close button. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now the spoke is installed. Next up, we need to create a credential so that we can connect to Jira. So go ahead and click on credentials. And there is the Jira entry that was created by our spoke. Let's put in a username. And it says password, but we actually want to use an API token. So back over to Jira. Under the account settings, there is a security section. And in there, there is a section for creating and managing API tokens. Go ahead and click on that. And let's create an API token. Give it a label referencing the instance that we are working from. Click on Create, and from here we can go ahead and copy it. We could also revoke it later from right here. So let's switch back to our instance and paste in that API token. And update this, and now we have a credential for our connection to use. Let's go ahead and create that connection now. So click on Connections. And we're going to need to make a new one. So click on New. And we're going to want an HTTPS connection. So click on that. Let's give it a name. We'll call this one Jira Outbound, because this is the direction we're going to be sending our incidents. And the credential is the one we just created. Connection alias, this is uh, referencing the spoke. And next up, we're going to need a connection URL. So let's go back to Jira and copy the host name from here. Copy that, and we will paste that into the connection URL box. And then we're going to submit it. Next, let's take a look at the connection and credentials aliases. This is created for us. We're just going to go take a look at it now. Click on Jira. And here you can see the things that we've created being referenced already. It's using basic auth with an API key. And here is our connection at the bottom. So this all looks good. Next up, let's go put this spoke to use. So we'll start off by searching for Flow Designer and clicking on Designer. Once that loads, let's go ahead and create a new flow. And we'll give that a name. Let's call it Jira Test. Submit that. And the next thing we're going to need is a trigger. What's going to cause this flow to start? And let's look for an incident being created. So we'll choose Created, and then select the table of Incident. And that's all we need for the trigger. Anytime an incident's created, this is going to start. What do we want to do with that information? Well, let's go to Jira and create an issue. So type in issue, that brings up the spoke options, and you can choose create issue there. Uh, the project key, this is actually going to use introspection, so let's give it a moment. It's going to query Jira and say, hey, what are the projects that are available to me? And here they are. We want the test project. Now Jira also lets you customize what an issue is called. And then, so let's query Jira with introspection again, and we can see there that it's called a bug. Now for the bug, we're going to need a summary. So open up the incident record that started this process and look for short description. There it is, and we'll just drag that over. For the description, let's use the incident description. So open up the record, find description, and just drag that over. 
So that'll create an issue on the Jira side that matches the incident on ServiceNow side. So how do we link these two? So it turns out that Jira gives us the issue back after creating it. So let's see what we need to do to update the record to tie these two together. We need these to be correlated. Uh, so we want to start off with the incident record. And then let's add a field. Now what we want to do is somehow use this issue ID to correlate the two. And it turns out we have a field for that called correlation ID. So that's the field we want to update. Let's update it with the issue ID. This will bind the incident to the bug over on Jira. So save that. And we're ready to activate this. Once activated, any incident that gets created will kick off this flow. And we're done. Let's try it out. We'll go to the incident table. Once we see that, let's go ahead and click on Create New. We'll give it a color. I'll choose Ashley. Give it a short description, and we'll just call this one Incident from Ashley. In service now. And the description, that can just be description from service now. Let's go ahead and submit. Now, if we go back to Flow Designer, you can see that there's a button called Executions. If we click on that, we can see that we have an execution queued. If we uh, refresh this a few times, we can watch it progress. Now that's in progress. And now it's finished. So let's take a look. We can see that it was started by the incident being created, and it went to Jira, created an issue, and then it updated the original record with the correlation ID. So let's go back over to Jira and see if we can see this new bug. We'll refresh the page, and there it is. Incident from Ashley in ServiceNow. Open it up, we can see the title and the description. Next, let's make this bidirectional. First, let's give Jira a way to call back to our instance. And we do that with a webhook. So search for webhook and open up Jira webhook registries. And there isn't one, so let's make a new one. We'll give it a name. We'll call this one Jira webhook. And a token, we're gonna to use the built-in token, which is Jira token, but really this can be anything. Go ahead and submit it. And the next thing we need to do is get the URL for Jira that it's gonna to use to call this webhook. So go back into our record, click on callback URL, and carefully copy this URL. Copy, and let's go back over to Jira. Go into the general configuration, scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on webhooks. And there they are. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And we'll give it a name referring to our instance. And we'll just call it webhook. Next, we're going to paste the URL from our instance right into here. And we want this to be run anytime an issue is updated. So check that. Go all the way down to the bottom and click on Create. So that's done. Anytime a Jira issue is updated, it's going to call our instance. Next, let's make a subflow for this. And we can see there's one here called Process Jira Webhooks. That is the default one that comes with the plugin. And we're going to want to make a copy of that. So go ahead and open it. And let's scroll up and close the inputs. And we can see that this default one just does a log. So click up here in the menu. We'll make a copy of this. And we'll call it the Demo Webhook Handler. So 
So scroll back up to the top again, and we'll close the inputs. And we can see that it just logs the interaction. So let's go ahead and give it something else to do. It sends us an issue whenever it calls the webhook, and we're going to make use of that. So we'll start by adding a new action, and we want to find the incident that correlates with this issue that's being sent over the webhook. So we'll choose lookup record. And the record that we want is the incident where the correlation ID, so let's find that, matches the issue ID. And this again is the issue that's passed over when the webhook is called. We'll drag the ID over. And that lookup is finished. So this is going to return an incident for us. Next thing we want to do is update the incident. So look for update record. And which record do we want to update? Well, we want to update the one that was returned from the previous step, the lookup. So go ahead and drag that incident over. And that'll populate the table for us. Now we want to update the description. So look for that. And we want to update it with the description from the issue that was passed in. So here's the issue. Scroll down to find description and drag that over. And then we're done. So we look up the incident and then we update it with the new description. Go ahead and save this and publish it. Now we need to tell our webhook handler which subflow to call. So let's go back over. And this time we're going to open up the routing policy. Click on that. You can see that we've got one that's already in here. This comes out of the box. And let's update it to call our new subflow. You can see here it calls the, uh, the default one. Let's change our scope to the Jira spoke. Open it up, leave the name, that's fine. And we're gonna change the answer to be our new flow, which was the demo webhook handler. Click on okay. And we'll go ahead and save this. Now there's one step that we needed to do on the subflow. So let's go back. Now, whenever Jira calls us, it's not actually going to have a user attached, and we need to tell this subflow what user to run as. So go into the properties, and instead of the user who initiates the session, we want it to use the system user. Update this, and publish it. So now we have a complete setup. Next, let's go ahead and open up Ashley's incident again. Search for incident. And there it is. And there's the original description. So let's go to Jira. And we're going to update this issue with a new description. Update from Jira. Go ahead and save it. This will kick off the webhook from Jira. Now go back to our subflow look at executions, and we can see that it is already run. It logged, it looked up the record, and it updated the record. So let's take a look. Here's our incident. Refresh the page, and there's the updated description. Now this completes our end-to-end -end flow of a bidirectional integration with Jira. Thank you for watching.